Hi, you're very welcome to this session of Excel Snacks delivered by me, Anne Walsh. Good to see you today. 20 minutes of Excel goodness that I like to deliver on a Friday. Let us kick off the show ASAP, if possible. All right. So what we're going to look at today is Excel Snacks. It's a peek into Excel's data cleansing superpower that nobody ever hears about. So I thought I'd whip out the few photos I have on cleaning. So there they all are, scoop brushes, washing machines, etc. 20 minutes of Excel goodness. Okay. Who am I? Tiny bit about myself. Okay. My name is Anne Walsh. I live in the West of Ireland. I have a website called the Excel Expert. I've been a freelance trainer since the mid 1990s. All right. Back before when Excel was maybe not as soon as when Excel was just green or orange, but you know, I've been, been around for a while. Written a couple of books on Excel, your Excel Survival Kit, your guide to surviving and thriving in an Excel world, which by happy chance happens to have a complete chapter on Power Query, our topic of today's discussion. Okay. We also have some book boon books, create great reports in Excel, get and transform data, reports in Word, and how to track your training records in Excel. Okay. I love movies, puns, and crime fiction. I've been married for 27 years to the same person. Just thought I'd mention that. I have one son who's a software engineer who's also producing this show. So he'll be monitoring the, the, the chat for you. And um, he's a software engineer, blame his mother. All right. Mothers get blamed for everything, so why not for this one? Okay. And at the moment, I'm writing another book about pivot tables. Okay. So what are we going to be covering today? All right. So what you're going to learn about today is this. What is Power Query and why should you care? Okay. We're going to look at some quick data cleansing techniques. And then once you've done all that, how can you reuse it again, if possible? Okay. Right. Just a couple of other bits. The housekeeping I always mentioned, yes, it will be recorded and sent out afterwards with the files, as I always do, usually probably in the next week. This is the last in the current series, right? There's going to be a new series in September, right? And you can ask questions in the chat. Now, um, I will pause at various points just to check in with Laura if there's any kind of questions in the chat. But bear in mind, this is 20 minutes, so we probably can't get to too many questions if possible. All right. So let us on with the show. Okay. So what do I mean by data cleansing? Okay. So quite often it's things like formatting text, capitalize, change the case, split columns, remove unwanted rows and columns, remove unwanted totals. Basically, if you don't want it, you want to clean it. Right. This can be done with formulas or, wait for it, Power Query, okay, which is also known as Get and Transform in Excel. Okay. So what we're going to look at here is, okay, why? Why is this important? Why would you care? Quite often, if you have things like pivot tables, the data needs to be formatted in a particular way, every line completed. That doesn't always happen, for example, if you get to things like an accounting dump. You get data in the format your organization wants. Okay. So quite often you might get codes in one format from your supplier, but for them to use them in your system, you need them and have them in a different format. Also to remove unwanted totals. I think I've mentioned that before. Right? You don't want to inadvertently double your budget or double your expenditure. And also just generally tidy up data, because okay? it's quite common. This is a really common task that you actually have to do. Okay. So where do you find it? Where do you get started? Because I know at this point, you cannot contain your excitement about the thought of it, right? So you get it under a place called Get and Transform tab, right? If you have Office 365, it is built into it. It only became available from Excel 2010. Um, and in that case, you have to do a thing called download and add in, which if, but if you go to Google, God bless Google, and type in, um, you know, Excel 2010 add in, you should be able to get it then. It's always free, all right? And it's one of these sort of things that people never know about, and it's brilliant. You load your data into Power Query. Right? Now you're gonna hear me keep calling it Power Query because when it first came out, that's what it was called. And now they call it Get and Transform. But it's a bit like the artist formerly known as Prince. It'll always be Prince to me, always be Power Query to me. Then you do your thing, all right? And then you close and load. So it's like you bring all the data out into a special room, you have a little chat with it, you tidy it up, and then you bring it back out again. That's essentially how Power Query works. And then what you can do then is you can add new and refresh. So that's the really, really handy bit about it. Okay. So let us have a look. 
So let's look at the first thing, which is going to be text transform. So I'm going to cover two segments in this. One of them is where you tidy up text, and the other one is where you kind of you do a little bit of a cleanup on an accounts file. Okay. So we're going to look at text transform. We're going to take a file. We're going to change it to lowercase, change it to uppercase, capitalize it automatically, add a prefix, add a suffix. So something at the beginning, something at the end. Okay. And we're also going to split columns. So those things can all be done with formulas in Excel. So you could you basically what you do is you take it to the side, tidy it up, and then copy and paste values back in again. Whereas Power Query just allows you to do that in kind of in you know much quicker format. So let us have a demo. I think so too. All right. So let me just kind of load up my file here first, okay, and just click share. Okay. Now, um, Laura, can I just check with you that you can see the Excel file here? Can I just check you can see that? Just give me a thumbs up. Yep, all right, lovely. Now, at this point, I've now got this data file that's ready, all right? And what I need to do is I go up here to data and my version says from sheet, but the chances are your version will say something like from table range, right? So, but what you're looking for is something like from table range. I've already converted this to a thing called a table, insert and table. So I go up here to data and then I go to from sheet and sometimes Zoom doesn't always follow me into the room, as it were. So this is where I'm bringing it out to the Power Query room. Let me have a quick chat now, just checking here. So Laura, can you see it kind of changing over? Do you want to have a quick pop it in the chat if it's changed or do I need to switch the... Because I never know with this sometimes. Yep, load now. Okay, brilliant. Okay, lovely. All right. So when you go into it here, all right, so when you go into Power Query, this is what it looks like. Okay, so there's my all my data. And over here on the right hand side, there's a thing called query settings. And every time I was gonna say I make a mistake, but every time I do something, it appears under the applied steps here. Okay, so you have the first ribbon up here, which is home, which is, you know, covers most of your options. And then you also have a thing here called transform, which is where we're going to go first. Okay, so go to transform. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to so you highlight the column, I want to change this lowercase. I go up here to format and see that it says lowercase. All right, that's all done. Okay, the next one then, I'm going to make it uppercase. So again, format, uppercase. And that doesn't matter whether you had 25 rows or 25,000 rows, it's all the same. It is wonderful. And I capitalize format again. Let's say capitalize each word, there we go. And then add prefix. So if I want to, let's say, add a prefix format, so I want to put something maybe at the beginning. So it's going to come up in a second. And I'm going to put in, let's say, 100 dash. It could be something else, but let's say 100 dash. And then click OK. And there you are. Add a prefix. And let's say, add suffix. So something at the end. And again, it's going to be the same thing, format, add suffix. And for example, I might say, and word and then click OK. All right, and see there automatically adds all that at the end. Okay. Now the next one is here is my split column. So what I want to do is basically split this column at the colon. Okay, so you can see the first bit it leads up there to a sentence, I want to split it at the colon. So let's say this time I'm going to go to split column. Now if you see here, you have a lot of choices by delimiter, which is going to be colon in our case, the number of characters by the positions, uppercase to lowercase, digit to non-digit. You know, and there's a lot of flexibility there around kind of data cleansing. So I'm going to go by delimiter and it says colon automatically. And I'm just going to put it the leftmost delimiter. Okay. But if I had a number of them, I might say for each occurrence and then I click OK. Now, once I got this done, you see there it says split columns one, split columns two. I could also rename those if I wanted to, which I'll do in the next segment. I've now basically completed what I needed to do. So my next step is I now need to, I brought it out to the room, Power Query room. I now need to bring it back in, cleaned up and tidied up and ready for action back into Excel. So I go up to home, I go to close and load, and then go close and load too. Okay. Now you have a lot of options here on this one, but I'm just going to go with the one that says table, then new worksheet, and then click OK. Give it a second, comes in, and I'm just going to call this cleaned data down at the bottom. Now, you're probably saying at this point, you know, that's great and all the rest of it. 
but what do happens if I kind of get, if I have to, you know, get more data to it? So if I go back down here to this one, okay, so see, for example, it says dip berry lesson. All right, and I go down here to data cleanup. And let's say I'm going to change the dip, okay, to something else. I'm going to change it, let's say, to curve. And I'm going to change this one to sunny. All right, so see there, I've done my data cleanup. If I've new data, I just add it to the original, go back to my clean data, right click, and then I go refresh. There you are, see there, and it's done all the work on that one again. So that's the first segment, which is my data uh, text cleanup. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop the share for a second. All right, and just, I want to pause and see if there's any questions at this point. I'm gonna just put them in the chat. I hope you're all awestruck by the beauty of Power Query. All right. I hope this is making your weekend for you. Okay. All right. So we've got about 10 minutes left. We're halfway through. Um, Laura, just let me know if there's any questions. And I'm just going to go on to the next bit, which is about if you have a data set or if you have um, like an accounts thing, what do you do then? So let me share my screen again. All right, so here it is. Okay, so can I just check that you can see my type, date, etc. here? Can you all see that? Just quick, if you can give me a quick check, Laura, just let me know. You can all see it. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Okay. All right, so here you have a data set, okay, which is this is a download from QuickBooks. Okay. The problem is that it's not pivot table ready, right? You know, so what I need to do first of all is I'm just going to go here and I'm going to go equals this. Because I'm just going to do a little check on it. Because this plus this one here. All right. So I'm just doing a little. This is going to be a way that I'm going to check the answer. So I see that it says 5314.44. Okay. Now, if I want to run a pivot off this, I don't need the balance column. I don't need that column. I don't need the total. I need to have these names into every single row on the way down. All right. So you can do all that again various ways in Excel. However, I want to show you how to do this in Power Query. The first thing I'm gonna recommend is basically that we are going to convert this into a table. So insert and table. Right. Now you don't have to, I'm gonna leave my table as headers. Yes, it does, and click okay. There we go. Right. Now, because it just, they're kind of saying that you can kind of pull it in with a sheet, but I just recommend just converting it to a table first. I then go up to data. And again, I'm saying from sheet, but it probably would be from table range. Um, in your scenario, so let's say from table sheet. Okay, and just check again. So I'll do other, a little bit more data cleansing on it as well. All right, let me just check it now. Okay, so just asking you, Laura, can, um, just quick thing on the chat. So can you let me know that you can all see that? So can you see that? The column one, the type, etc. Just check, you can see it. The, all right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to assume that the moment you can see it, it's hopefully all right. So first thing I'm going to do is I need to do the bit of data cleansing on it. So I'm going to go over here to this one and I'm going to do a thing called fill down, all right? Because what I want to do is I want this to be on every single row where it says no. Okay. So I go over here to um, my my transform and I go fill and I go fill down. Now, again, you can do all this in Excel. You do not hear me arguing about that. I then basically, I want to remove everything that starts with total because I don't need the totals. So I go up here to this one, text filters, and I say, does not begin with total. And the reason I do it that way is that if the names change, that will kind of accommodate that. So it does not begin with total. So I don't want anything that starts with total and I click okay. Okay, now, all right, so let's see it now. Now, see that for some reason it, has, it hasn't kept the total. So what I'm going to do here is that if you make a mistake on it, I go back here to my query settings on the right and I delete the filtered rows. Okay. So I go up here again to column. I say text filters. And I say does not begin with. All right. All right. And I just type in total. And I click OK. All right, yeah, that's done. And just to bear in mind as well, Power Query can be case sensitive. All right, so just to, to bear that in mind. I, the other things I don't need, I go across here. I don't need the balance column. 
So right click and remove, right? Um, I'll worry about the null in a second. I don't need this column here. Just remove, all right? Just go back here to this one. I want to rename my column one to customer. So right click on it up here and just rename, and call it customer. Oh, if I spell customer correctly. Right. And then the last couple of bits that I need to do is that I don't want these nulls in it. So I'm just going to go here and just deselect the null. And null again is case sensitive, you need to bear that in mind. And the last thing you're recommended to do is sort of do a quick sort of check on the data. So if I go up here and look at my transform, it says data type text. And if Power Query is not sure what it is, it says any. I don't know what that is, it could be anything. So I call it any. And it always puts the dates into date time. So I don't want that, I just want date. Click to date. Okay, and then we just go back here now to this one, scroll across. There we have it. So at this point, my data is looking in tip top shape. So I go back here to home, close and load, close and load two. And just give it a second to do its thing. Just do it as a table. Right. Bring it in here. Now I'm just going to rename this one to original. And then I'm going to rename this one to cleaned. Okay. And then I'm just going to show you this very handy little trick you can do with tables. Table design and let's go total row. All right. Now see there, there's my total row. All right. And then it's 5314.44. And if I go back to the original, 5314.44. So that's a little kind of check and balance I can kind of build into it. Right. Now, the beauty of this is that if you've done all this work and basically you're doing the same report every month or every week, okay, if I go back here into the original, and what I'm going to do is, I'm, let's say I'm going to pick the name here, or if I copied and pasted in my new data, it's probably as handy as anything. And let's say, for example, I'm just going to put in my new name here. And the name that comes to my mind, a fairly random mind, is just, I was listening to her this morning, or I was watching a documentary about her, is Britney Spears. Not Brinty Spears, but Britney Spears. Right. So remember, I'm putting this into the original. Okay, and I'm just going to go down to this one, and I'm going to change this to, um, let's say, another name. Okay. Put down Elon Musk, since the gentleman is in the news at the moment. Now, when I go back here into cleaned, and then I do a right click and refresh, you see there it's updated all the names here automatically. And it would do exactly the same thing if it had any, if you had any new data in it or whatever. Right? And that's where the beauty of it are just reusing it again. So I'm just going to stop the share at a moment. See if there's any questions. Any questions? I'm going to pop them in the chat. Are so good. All right, lovely jubbly. Let me just do another, we start bringing it to a close now, about two minutes we have. Share my screen. Do a little. Okay. All right, so here we have it. So we've done the demo. Okay. We also looked at tidying up an accounts file. See there, removed the totals, removed unwanted columns formatted the data, you renamed some of the columns, and then you updated it with refresh. Okay, And then, so basically you took this thing they had on the left and made a nice slick job of it as it is on the right. Just a quick mention then as well, I've done the demo. Okay, and just to say, I have a book on this, okay? It's called Excel Get and Transform eBook, developed by Bookbone. And there is a chapter in the, my Excel Survival Kit book, which is all about Power Query, which comes loaded with the files and everything else. Okay. Now, this is the last of the current series in, in my snack series. Um, I plan to start them again in September, because I'm sure you have all better things to be doing in June, July, and August, right? Now that we've been let out, okay? Rather than using, um, you know, watching Excel snacks. And my plan is that I'm going to um, use Excel for tracking training records. So I'm going to, to run a series of snacks around that topic. So things like automation data entry, the lookups, the old reliables, if functions and pivot tables. Okay. So I'm just going to stop the share for a second. And I think I'm pretty much bang on time. All right.
And uh, one minute left. Any questions from anybody before we kind of start to wrap it up? One minute left. Okay. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. 20 minutes of Excel goodness. All after your lunch, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>